everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. Today we got another Porsche video for you. So last time we did this 3D printed front clamshell. Oh, that looks so good. For those of you who are new, this is a 2014 Porsche Cayman. We've been working on this one for quite some time. We got a 3D printed rear bumper. So that's 68 pounds. We also got this 3D printed front clamshell. Ooh. So the original plan for this one was to do dual motor. So front motor and rear motor, 900 horsepower. And because it was a little crash damage, we thought it would be a great time to actually change up the looks with that sound effect. Whoosh. I was gonna actually wait a little bit longer, but I needed to reclaim my house, get all these pieces out of the house. At Bob, Bob, dash, W, 5D. Clearly you were single. So sit back, we got another 3D printing episode for you. A while ago, we had completed the design and this is the front. So here it is in CAD and we need to slice it all into several little segments that we can 3D print. Oh, there were questions about how do you slice the parts? How do you slice them? So I do this in the slicer, but basically you bring the part in to the slicer. It's bigger than the print space. So what you can do, there are tools or menu items where you click cut and it'll actually separate that single part. And so what you have to do is you kind of have to put a section of your part of the overall part on there and then you cut and so to perform a cut then you can kind of adjust the height as well as the angle of the cut so here i'm just dragging it down to fit height wise in the 3d printer and it still says it's too big so you can see on the left here there are actually two parts so we're just going to toggle off one and you can see all this other part is what was cut so it's still way too big for the printer so again we position it and now we're going to cut vertically so again we position it and perform another cut and this time we're going to change the angle instead of height we kind of are going to do a vertical cut to kind of uh, help it fit left to right and we position it again we perform another cut so you can see on the left side there are now three parts we toggle off and onto the one part we want and you can see it's still too big for a platform because there's kind of two sections and so again we position it angle cut again vertically but this time front to back so it'll fit again perform another cut and you see now there's four pieces on the left and again we can drag the other pieces out of the slicer or out of the uh, printable area and you can see now we have something that's part that we can fit on so this is basically how the entire bumper was sliced and as you can see without keeping track this would be very hard to figure out now wait where was this on the bumper so again that's kind of what makes assembly pretty challenging if you don't kind of label your parts or if you don't know where they go so the printer that i used to create this front splitter was the elegu centuri carbon some of the things i like about this one again it was really easy to set up it's just plug and play again even for really tough materials all the settings it has right out of the box work very very well in fact the elegu centuri carbon i liked the settings so much that i actually copied those settings and used them on another printer and actually sped up the printer like three so again, it's got great settings right out of the box for really fast, good prints. The bed size is only 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters by essentially Z, 250 millimeters. For the parts I print, I have to cut them pretty small to get all the things I need. It does have real-time monitoring, so I can be at my computer and just click on the button and it shows real-time kind of what it's doing, make sure all the prints are printing great. It does have automatic filament unloading and loading. And I do think my favorite thing about it is the speed. It prints super fast and it's really good quality. If you're interested in a 3D printer, I'll leave a link in the video description below. So in the last video, I tried to answer some questions that I thought you had. Here are some questions that you actually asked that I did not answer, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer them now. So here's a comment from at Jan Martins 7954. By the way, PLA melts very quickly in the sun and deforms like hell. At Slydog43 YouTube. Also, PLA isn't very UV resistant. It warps in heat too easily. ASA would have been better filament type in my honest opinion. TX Horns Fan 33322. What are you printing with PLA? Do you plan on just using it as a mold? At Professor Ozone. How will the final product be made? Will you fiberglass over that or make a mold? At Abdullah Babdra. 8596. A question, what kind of filament are you using? And two, actually would it stand the heat of the car or the sun? Have you considered the PLA begins softening around 55 to 60 degrees Celsius? During hot summers with sun shining on the bumper, it can deform. I think it's really important considering it used 86 kilograms of filament. At Interlooper 28, are you planning on reprinting it in ABS or another tougher or heat resistant material since we'll be outside? At Rodville. Okay, one question you didn't answer in this one but might have before. This is just a template for fiberglass part, right? I mean, if you use this like it is, or even coat it with fiberglass, wouldn't it just fall apart like a bunch of Legos? I guess what I'm really asking is, how is this going to be strong enough to drive around 
with all the vibrations and whatnot. At Talisker1103, what is the weight of the front bumper and how is it structurally sound? At Kodak underscore Jack, will you now do common bodywork to smooth all the seams? At the underscore privateer, hmm, something tells me that the 3D print might serve better as a form for laying fiberglass slash carbon fiber. I don't think that even the best PLA will be roadworthy. At Dominic Trefelletti 630 why PLA? Are you planning on wrapping it in carbon fiber? I ask as PLA will warp with heat and wetness. Where is the strength? It looked like you've removed a lot in the forward impact area. PLA will not provide great or any resistance for impact. What is your plan for this regard? I get using PLA as it's cheap, but some of this, if final, should be done in, some, in a different material. At Katina LB1722, from my experience, PLA plus from eSun shrinks and deforms in the sun. I hope the paint will prevent that. At 19 Stealth 89, I know you probably plan to put filler and paint over, but on a car, PLA will have massive deformation issues over time just from sun exposure. At Top Gamer 7, hope you have a solution for PLA warping under UV and summer heat. At Damaged Spline, why did you choose PLA plus? and not ASA. I don't think PLA Plus is weather resistant as ASA. At Engineered Taurus, are you using the 3D print as a buck or as the finished item? At Real Prawn, this is why people buy 3D printers and end up selling them. You don't know how to use it and what to use it for. FKN PLA, question mark. Are you kidding me? So as you can see, a lot of those comments focused on the material that I use and not knowing kind of the end plan. So I think I have mentioned this before in other videos, but not in that video. My plan for this is I really just need a shape. So once I have a shape, I can make a mold and then make carbon fiber parts. So I have done stuff like this before. I did it on the MGA. I made a transmission tunnel, all 3D printed, laid up a fiberglass mold and then pulled a fiberglass part from that mold to be the transmission tunnel. So the plan is to do the same thing for this, make it all smooth so I can make a mold from it and then we can pull carbon fiber parts from it. So I figured as I was doing it, even just the surface imperfections, like the layer lines and stuff, even that's not gonna be good enough for a good car finish. So no matter what, I thought, God, you're gonna have to essentially mud the whole thing, you're gonna have to sand it. And at that point, I thought that'll be a great place to take a mold from, and then I can do carbon fiber parts. So that is the plan for the 3D printed parts. For today's sponsor, we have Wild Badger, and this is an electric lawnmower. Got your clipping catcher here. All right, so this is the same company that did the snowblower. So I'm really excited to see this one. So this is where we put the battery. So this one comes up and then the battery slides in there. So to start the lawnmower, we just push this one down and do this. I'm really looking forward to this lawnmower, but it doesn't seem right that I am the one to evaluate it. We really should have a professional evaluate it. Hey, professional lawnmower. Yeah. Do you want to try this one out? It's a new electric lawnmower. So how long you been mowing lawns? Four years, probably. Four Five. years? Have you always used a gas mower until this one? Yes. So always a gas one. So I want you to mow this and then afterwards you'll tell us what you think. Okay. So I did wait, uh, it's been a little over a week and it's been pretty wet and rainy. So the grass is nice and thick, even a little bit wet. So we're gonna see how it does with the wet, thick grass. I will say it is very quiet. So normally if somebody's mowing the lawn, like a neighbor or whatever, you can hear them from like several houses away, even like a street away. This, I can almost not hear it in my own yard. We usually just do the mulch. In this case, it may have been better to do the bag. This does come with a bag, so you could do that as well. So how was mowing? It was great. It was a lot easier than a gas-powered motor, and it was a lot easier to take apart the battery, then refill it with gas and stuff, so. Because normally you'd have to refill it with gas. How fun is that? Not very fun. So it's got adjustable speed. Was it too fast or too slow? Not really. I feel like the fast is good enough for me at least, and whenever I need to go slow, I can take it around the corner. What else? Was it, is it heavier or lighter than a gas? Probably lighter. Anything else that you would say? Not really, it was great though. This is a 40 volt, 21 inch self-propelled lawnmower. The self-propelled or auto advanced feature goes from anywhere from 0.6 meters per second to 1.2 meters per second. So kind of a slow walk or a brisk walk. It has a lever on the side that makes the speed infinitely variable. It comes with two four amp hour batteries and a two amp hour supercharger. It has a strong brushless motor with 3,300 RPM. It has seven position height adjustment. It's easy, you can just do it from one location. You don't have to go to each wheel. And it is pretty quiet at only 60 decibels. If you are ready to upgrade your lawn mowing experience, I'll leave a link in the video description below.
guess it's better than sticking to the carpet. Here we are in the garage with the front splitter. And what we're noticing is it can't quite fit into where it needs to. So those features line up with these features. However, as you try and put it in, it can't go physically up where it needs to because we've got like some of these features that are hitting and they can't go up until it slides all the way back. So we just need to kind of, I'll call it chamfer this or angle this a little bit. I think that should allow us to assemble it. So we'll just go ahead and start cutting. Huh, it actually worked. So it just wants to fall out. So we'll have to see the best way to kind of get it to stay in place. That looks sweet. All right, it is in place. It does kind of want to slide forward because I don't really have anything fastening it yet. That looks really good. All right, here it is with this back part on. I've just got a balance kind of in place, but this is where the clamshell is split. So basically this front hood can go up. This will stay with the rest of the body. So we've got still planned some side skirts and kind of the wide flares for the back as well. I also, I need to get some wheel spacers or something just so you can see the look because it does look a little silly with the wheels so far in. But again, I think this is gonna look just amazing. Like maybe like 10 feet. Okay, right about there, probably. Okay. Okay, to start with, let's just try one jack right in the middle. So now let's take a look. It's still a little high. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. All right, here it is out in the wild. Had to put some jacks under some areas just to kind of get things to line up. All right, so that's gonna do it for this time. We got that front splitter all made. We got the air wind deflectors behind the tires all made. Everything's looking really good. That'll do it for this time. See you next time.